Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the ANCA for our Congressional Corner. Uh, I'm Teresa Yeremian, Government Affairs Director at the ANCA, and I want to welcome our guest today, Congresswoman Judy Chu. Um, Congresswoman Chu, thank you for joining us. Uh, much like last thank time, you. this is a conversation with members of Congress uh, on issues that are, are of importance to Armenian Americans uh, across the United States. Congresswoman, you have been uh, an essential leader uh, both on the Armenian caucus and just in general, really fighting for uh, both the rights of your constituents uh, in Pasadena, but also um, you know taking specific care of the issues that affect Armenian Americans across the United States. Um, today, I wanted to focus our conversation. You've done so much in your career and your tenure in Congress, but I wanted to focus on uh, the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh, Artsakh. Uh, on our interview today. We recently had a conversation with a uh, congressional co-chair of the Armenian Caucus, Congresswoman Jackie Spear, and she shared with us uh, you know, her experience in Artsakh. Um, you were with her on that trip. You, This was your also your first trip to the Republic of Artsakh. Um, I'm just curious, um, and our audience is curious, what was your impression? What was your first impression of Artsakh? Well, I did not know what to expect. I was determined to go to Artsakh uh, because of what I'd heard about the conflict there. But uh, I anticipated that uh, it would be very, very tense. And uh, it started off, in fact, with a military helicopter ride uh, because there aren't any direct flights that are allowed there. So that was quite an adventure in and of itself. But as soon as we landed, I was just so amazed because Artsakh was charming, relaxed, beautiful. The people were friendly, it had a small town atmosphere. We had a beautiful lunch of very fresh um, food that and, and beautiful wine. And it reminded me of the south of France. Um, it, it just really struck me that something so beautiful could be in such danger. And it gave me even more resolve to do something about the situation in Artsakh. Thank you. Yes, I do remember that trip. And I remember your your um, your amazement also of the tourism industry in Artsakh and the vibrancy of the tourism industry during that lunch. Um, yes, I was really... Go ahead, go ahead, please. No, I was just really surprised because there we were having lunch when in walked uh, maybe about uh, 25 tourists from Hong Kong. And uh, they were in Armenia and decided to take the trip to Artsakh, even though it was quite a long drive. Um, so there is such potential for a tourist industry in Artsakh. Indeed, indeed. Um, Congresswoman, you've been a strong proponent of the Royce Engel uh, proposals for peace in Artsakh. Um, even last year, you successfully passed an amendment in the Defense Authorization Act uh, bill last year calling for uh, the implementation of these Royce Engel uh, peace proposals. Having been to Artsakh now, and just as you described, you expected tense um, conflict. Instead, you, you saw a peaceful, democratic nation. You know, how much more important after having seen that um, are the removal of snipers, the additional OSCE monitors, and the placement of gunfire locators on the border for, the pe for peace and to ensure peace in the region? Well, because I was able to visit Artsakh, I was able to see just how close some of these Armenian communities are to the line of contact. And that means those families are at risk if the conflict were to restart. The Royce Engel proposals are some of the most common sense proposals for maintaining peace by uh, taking away heavy arms and by making sure that there are monitors that can enforce the agreement um, and by making sure uh, that uh, we know where the shots are coming from and thus the gun locators. That's why it was so shocking that representatives of Azerbaijan's government came to my office to actually try to talk me out of supporting these proposals. But the reason is because they do not want peace. In fact, 
In just the week between May 31st and June 6th, Artsakh saw about 100 ceasefire violations with over 1,000 shots fired at Armenian positions. That is precisely why we need the three elements of the Royce Engel proposal, because without it, it's a license for Azerbaijan to act aggressively to undermine the peace, putting lives of innocent people in danger. Indeed, and we have seen an increase in aggression. Um, as you mentioned, Azerbaijan has also began doing military exercises on the border in Nakhichevan. Um, so they have indicated over time um, that they are not uh, an actor in the peace proposals. Um, in line with this, the State Department has also argued that it wants to prepare populations for peace instead of continuing the humanitarian demining program in Artsakh, um, which it's saved countless lives in the country. And it seems to us that, the exact, that, that that's the exact type of program that would prepare populations for peace. What are your thoughts on this, Congresswoman? Well, this is one of the issues that I feel most strongly about. If the State Department really wanted to prepare the populations for peace, they would not cut funding for HALO's demining program. Leaving landmines and unexploded ordinances uh, is a literal obstacle to the goal of peace. Landmines exist to prevent peace and they exist to make it impossible for the people to use the land to have a productive economy. Instead, if we invest it in HALO, which is doing the demining, then they would continue the work to make the land safe for people to live on. What better way is there to prepare a population for peace than that? Absolutely. And Congresswoman, you went to HALO when you were in Artsakh. Can you tell us about your, yeah. what, was, what was that visit like? What was that visit like for you? And what, was, what, what did you walk away? Um, what was your impression walking away from that? Well, first of all, we were greeted by all these young people who were devoting months, if not years of their lives to demining. And, and it's so incredibly dangerous. I was just so impressed by their dedication. And then because of their demonstration, I was impressed by their skill because they showed us what they do to demine. Um, and of course, I've been impressed by their results because in 20 years of operation, they have cleared over 33,000 acres of former minefields, which means that now 33,000 acres of land can be safely farmed or lived on. And thanks to HALO, nearly 61,000 landmines and other explosive hazards have been destroyed. Um, can you imagine the farmers, the children uh, that could have been killed or maimed if those 61,000 uh, explosive hazards had been allowed to exist. Um, well, seeing their work and wa being walked through the process of how they identify and safely remove those mines shows me that it can be done. But it is incredibly dangerous work. You have to have the experts. One wrong move can be fatal. And um, that's why you have to have experienced people such as those with HALO. And that's why I support having the funding for HALO to complete this job of demining Artsakh. Thank you. Um, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, the HALO team has done God's work, as we say. Uh, in the region and saving people's lives physically, but also educating them. Um, I know that, for instance, in recent years, um, folks, there have been near misses, an increase in near misses. And the reason they've, they've gone from fatality to near misses is because of HALO's um, village by village education. Um, that also is a part of that USAID funding. Um, and going into that, you know, if you were to discuss this with someone who had absolutely no idea, um, why would you say USAID funding is so important 
for the demining project in Artsakh. And for aid well, and humanitarian exactly. aid. Yeah, it's exactly what you said. Halo not only demines, but it educates. And I'm so glad you raised that because of what happened just last month. Um, on June 12th, an 11 year old boy was digging in his family's garden and found a submunition, which had been launched during the 2016 conflict. But fortunately, because of the education uh, that has been taking place, this boy knew how to identify the device and he notified his parents. I mean, just think about how tragic the ending would have been if the boy had been injured or lost his life. So this goes to show that Halo's work is not yet done. And uh, in fact, much still has to be done. Uh, at least 1.7 million square miles of contaminated areas that still need to be cleared so that families can be free to live their lives without fear and so that they can walk in the woods without worrying that it could be fatal. And Congresswoman, I, I specifically remember this image. I, I have two very vivid images of you in Artsakh, one of which you were um, kneeling with the, the female deminer as she was showing you how she demines. And another where you mentioned the uh, April war in 2016, um, the new types of uh, bombs that Azerbaijan had planted, um, specifically aiming aimed at children. I mean, these were very small cylindrical bombs with very long ribbons. And you have, there was one someone was showing you from the Halo team. Um, and I specifically remember that when you talk about this 11 year old boy, um, you know, thank God that he didn't, you know, because of the Halo education, he didn't fall for this. But these are the types, this is the, the, the level of the increase of aggression we've seen on behalf of Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And, and to that point, you know, Azerbaijan has increased its aggression over the course of the uh, years, but specifically 2020 has been, you know, one after the other in, in Azerbaijan really plummeting. Um, and, and pushing the boundaries, what can the people of Artsakh want peace? What can the U.S. be doing to check Azerbaijan's aggression? Well, the number th one thing we can do is to enforce the Royce Engel peace proposals. Um, knowing when Azerbaijan violates the ceasefire and being able to identify it through these shot locators or through the monitors will allow us to hold Azerbaijan accountable. Right now, the level of monitoring is at a shamefully low level once every few months. How can you possibly be doing a good job monitoring uh, if uh, uh, the, the monitors are barely there? But the US and Azerbaijan have close relations and that means that we have leverage. That means that if they are to get the economic aid that they do from us, then we can enforce these Royce Engel peace proposals. Specifically, the US provides Azerbaijan with $100 million for security, which allows Azerbaijan uh, to use its own resources against Artsakh. Without that aid, Azerbaijan would be less free to spend money attacking the people of Artsakh. That's why every year I support ending the USAID to Azerbaijan. Thank you, Congresswoman. Um, we've had a fruitful discussion. Um, I want to thank you from, from our supporters from the ANCA for joining us on this conversation. Um, before we end, I do wanna mention um, for the folks who are listening to us, um, anca.org, forward slash call. This week, um, we're going to see the Appropriations Committee make a decision on Artsakh aid. Um, we need you to make that phone call to your member of Congress to enforce how important it is to you that Artsakh receives um, necessary humanitarian assistance. Um, so please make that phone call, anca.org forward slash aid, uh, forward slash call. And uh, Congresswoman, before we, we uh, uh, head off. I just wanted to ask, um, you know, you had a short trip to Artsakh this time. 
Um, are you looking forward to another trip? And after, of course, the coronavirus uh, pandemic uh, lessons, but um, uh. are you looking forward to another trip? And if so, what are you looking forward to discovering next in the region? Well, I hope that by the time I visit Artsakh next, Hey, will have funding restored. Uh, and in fact, in the appropriations process, I'm so glad you mentioned that because um, for this appropriations year, I requested $1.5 million for the demining. And then after it was announced that the State Department would no longer fund HALO, I submitted a request for a $10 million for HALO to complete its work. So we can definitely use your phone calls for that. So I would love to visit in my next visit, new areas of land that have been cleared for farming, living or recreation. I hope to see more ways in which the US has strengthened economic ties to the people of Artsakh. Instead of funding Azerbaijan's warfare, uh, I would love to see funding for the development and growth in Artsakh. And I hope that uh, with a quiet line of contact that could be achieved by the Royce Engel proposal, we could see more families settle in peace, helping the area to thrive. Now, this last trip was about the costs of war, but by my next trip, I'm hoping to see the benefits of peace. Well, we look forward to that as well. We look forward to working with you in your office, Congresswoman, to, to achieve those goals. Um, you, to our, to our audience members and listeners, uh, you heard it from the Congresswoman, make that phone call. This is uh, our civic duty uh, to ensure that our members of Congress, like Congressman Chu, understand the importance. Um, Congressman Chu is obviously a leader on these issues. Um, let's make sure that all of your members are leaders on these issues. So go to anca.org forward slash call. Congresswoman, I can't thank you enough for joining us uh, for the ANCA uh, Congressional Corner, our, uh, our discussion with members of Congress on issues that matter. Um, thank you. And if you have any uh, uh, ending words, please feel free. Parting words. Well, thank you, ANCA, for all the work that you do, you are raising your voices. And because of your voices, you have educated me about Armenia and about Artsakh and have allowed me to make a difference. Thank you, Congresswoman. Thank you.